I need to start off this video by explaining some things. I know you guys read the title, but I need to inform you that I really love Animal Crossing New Horizons. What it has brought to the Animal Crossing series is remarkable. The graphics are beautiful. The music is amazing. The sounds of nature have never felt more real. The new features are fun and add a lot of depth to the series, and of course, the customization. The ability to build your own island the way you want to is really something that the Animal Crossing series has been missing. And with Nintendo adding updates and new features regularly is a real treat. There is a lot, and I mean a lot of fun to be had here, and in many ways I feel that New Horizons was a step in the right direction for the series, as this is honestly one of the most fun Animal Crossing games I have played. But I bring all of this up because... Guys, let's not beat around the bush here. This isn't my first rodeo. I've been a part of many gaming communities, whether it be Mass Effect, Kingdom Hearts, or even Madden. The point is I have seen what happens in these gaming communities, and the Animal Crossing community is no different. Sure, we are more chill, and generally we do our best to help one another out, but I've seen the most positive and the most toxic sides of this community, so I am comfortable when saying I know what goes on, which is why I am making this whole disclaimer. The truth is, gaming communities have trouble admitting when a game they play has a flaw or even multiple flaws. Now, not all communities are bad about this, but every community has their fair share of diehards who won't let anyone badmouth their game that they hold so close to their heart. Though I'm not saying anything is wrong with others having this opinion, but this is why I made this video, as I also want to share my opinion. But to continue, people defending games with flaws can happen for a number of reasons. Sometimes fans wait for a game so long that once they get it, they can only see the game through rose-tinted glasses. Or the game literally has no competition, so fans will cling on to this game for the pluses while ignoring the negatives, as there's no other choice. And both of these can somewhat apply to Animal Crossing New Horizons. Looking back at New Leaf, it was released practically eight years ago, and its last update was four years ago with the Welcome Amiibo update. So us Animal Crossing fans were waiting for years for a new game, technically almost a whole decade. So the anticipation for the new Animal Crossing game was massive, and in many ways, Animal Crossing is a unique game that not a lot of games have replicated. Sure, there are life sims like The Sims, Stardew Valley, and Harvest Moon, all fun and successful life sims, but Animal Crossing feels different. You can sit down and get bored of Stardew Valley, but then you can just switch to Harvest Moon for a similar but different experience. There really isn't a game that similar to Animal Crossing, to my knowledge, so yes. Animal Crossing does fall under both of these categories, which is why I need to bring this up. I need to make this clear for you all. I really do love Animal Crossing New Horizons. I mean, when you spend 300 plus hours on a game, in my opinion, you have to love it to an extent. And while I love this game, I have to admit, I am a bit disappointed. Sure, I can just sit here and point out all the nitpicks, like the number of customization slots is too low. Why can't you build more than eight bridges and inclines? Why can only one bridge and incline be built today, or one house be moved today? Why did you guys get rid of the secret entrance? It wasn't hurting anyone. The point is that Animal Crossing New Horizons isn't perfect. It has flaws, like pretty much every game. And as consumers, it is generally our responsibility to point out these flaws for the creators to fix them. I know I have a tendency to ramble in my videos, but I feel like I need to explain that just because we love a game and the series doesn't mean we aren't allowed to express our constructive criticism. Game developers need to hear our criticism so they can always improve on the product they are selling. If we don't, then we're just going to end up with another Madden series, a dull and pointless game that didn't add anything with each new installment. Which is ironic here, as EA and Madden were both recently under fire with a trending hashtag from the fans of the series who were tired of paying full price for pretty much the same game with no new improvements. This backlash was so great that EA had to respond and said that they're going to fix the issue. Now, I really don't believe EA will fix anything. They are a pretty evil company. But the point stands, even though we love Animal Crossing New Horizons, us fans need to tell Nintendo when there is an issue with their games. That way, all of us consumers can have the best possible Animal Crossing there is. So when you hear me saying constructive criticism, please understand this is coming from my love of the series, not from malice or anger. I truly love this game, which is why I'm making this video, because this game could be so much better, practically a 10 out of 10 good. Now with all that out of the way, let's start. Here is Animal Crossing New Horizons' one big problem. 
This all started, I believe, in May of this year. I was going to do a series for the channel. I won't say what that series is, as I might still do it in the future if I get more free time. However, this series required me to play the original Animal Crossing, and I played it for almost two weeks straight. And after this, I decided to play some New Leaf. This honestly felt very weird, especially when I decided to hop back on New Horizons. After playing New Horizons for a while again, I realized what issue I was experiencing. The issue wasn't any glitches or problems with the feature. Features. No, it was my villagers. I can't guess what Animal Crossing games you have all started with, but from my comments it seems the vast majority of you either started with New Leaf or New Horizons, and some city folk here and there. But there is a small fraction of you who started when I did, which was with the first Animal Crossing game back in the early 2000s. This is a big reason why I feel like a lot of fans of the recent games don't notice this issue like I did. They never experienced what the villagers were like in the original games. Well let me tell you, they were different. You see, the early 2000s were a much different time for the gaming industry. Games like The Sims, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and even World of Warcraft all came out during this time. All imaginative and loved games like Animal Crossing. Gaming today, it almost seems like there isn't anything that we can't do slash make. But back in the early 2000s, games had to be limited to what they had to do due to the hardware. But Animal Crossing seemed to handle this pretty well. Even with the limited amount of space on the GameCube and the GameCube discs, it is said that Animal Crossing population growing had three times the dialogue of normal RPG games. And this played into Animal Crossing's strength as it was a big part of the game. When you weren't collecting fish, or fossils for the museum, or hustling for the bells, you were talking with your villagers, creating friendships along the way. And after replaying the first game, I realized something. And this realization was that New Horizons has one big problem. And like I said before, the big problem is its villagers. The Animal Crossing series has honestly changed a lot, like all game series. We definitely can't say that games like Final Fantasy and Pokemon are the exact same games that they were when they started. Games adapt, and Animal Crossing is the same. And this change is generally good. This is honestly why Cinefolk was criticized so much for its lack of innovation. As many complained, it was just a mix of Animal Crossing population growing and Animal Crossing Wild World, which in turn made it so poorly. So the real big turn was when New Leaf came out and it shocked everybody, having you the player in control of the town as mayor. This change was met with a lot of praise. I also believe New Leaf got a lot of praise because it still stuck to its roots for the most part, as it did really feel like you were building up a community and making friends along the way. However, with new updates and customization options in New Horizons, it seems they have shifted focus from building a community, like in the old games, by interacting with your villagers, to literally building up your community with customization and terraform. Forming. And that's the problem here. Nintendo seems to have wanted these villagers to have character in the beginning, with unique dialogue options and backstories on their e-reader cards. It is clear they wanted these conversations to feel genuine so the player would feel immersed in the game with its villagers. But nowadays, in New Horizons, these villagers lack that character. Don't get me wrong, the writing teams did an amazing job, but there are no characters here. These villagers are less character and more caricature. All they talk about is their personality. Rald and Lyman on my island only, and I mean only, talk about working out. Pretty much nothing else. Lazy villagers like Bo only talk about sleeping and food, and a lot of you may argue, and I know, that's what they're pretty much supposed to do. But this isn't genuine conversation like in the earlier games. This feels like a program talking to me. Now this may upset you to hear, but the villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons act more like NPCs and less like characters. Think of the people walking around in your Pokemon towns, just more advanced. In the first game, even when they were just explaining game mechanics, it still felt like a genuine conversation. It immersed you into the game and believing these characters were real. But in New Horizons, a game that came out almost two decades later, all you get is some generic messages from your villagers most of the time. Yes, please ask me what the deal is with Tom Nook. Yes, please tell me about your abs for the millionth time. Oh, I absolutely love that every single villager talks about a custom design I'm wearing. Yes, I love hearing my villagers ask me if I've been in another villager's house over and over again. Nintendo, this is not how conversations are. This wouldn't be be an issue if the first game was like this, but the first game's conversations 
well, felt like real conversations. It worries me that when Nintendo added all this amazing customization and other cool new features to the game, they seem to have forgotten what this game is about. If you don't believe me, just listen to the creator himself. Katsuya Iguchi is the creator of Animal Crossing. Now, sadly, we aren't here to discuss how appreciative we are to him for this series. Maybe we'll do that another day. But we are here to learn why he made Animal Crossing and its true meaning. In an interview with Edge, Iguchi described the creation of Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing features three themes family, friendship, and community. But the reason I want to investigate them was a result of being so lonely when I arrived in Kyoto. The city I come from, Chiba, is east of Tokyo and quite a distance from Kyoto. And when I moved there, I left my family and friends behind. In doing so, I realized that being close to them, being able to spend time with them, talk with them, play with them was such a great important thing. I wondered for a long time if there would be a way to recreate that feeling. And that was the impetus behind the original Animal Crossing game. You see, Animal Crossing is about friendships family, and community, Aguchi left his hometown to work for Nintendo, and he felt homesick like many of us would, and he wanted to recreate these themes in a game, and that game was Animal Crossing. And in the first game, you have all those themes. And yes, you have these themes to an extent in New Horizons, but I always have felt that the first game represented this aspect the most. And while New Horizons does community fantastic as you are stirring up your own island community from the ground up, I feel that friendship and family have recently declined. Villagers don't have genuine conversations for the most part. They mostly just talk about stuff relating to their personality. And even the length of which they talk is shorter. Look at how many conversations I can have in New Horizons in the time I have one conversation in the original. I'm sorry guys, but I don't feel connection with these villagers. This became most apparent to me with my favorite villager from when I replayed Animal Crossing. I believe you've probably noticed that a lot of the footage I have shown is of me talking to Hornsby. He was my best friend during the two weeks I replayed the first game. His conversations always portrayed him as a goofy but gentle giant. But he was also a lazy type, so he could talk about food and just being lazy. But it was never in your face or in every conversation. It made Hornsby feel like like a genuine character and it made me want him in New Horizons. But after playing New Horizons for a while after playing the original, I figured out that there was no point. I already had four lazy villagers on my island at the time. And you want to know what I figured out? All four of them kept repeating the same thing as each other all the time. They were the same said the same things about food, sleep. Then I noticed it with my two normal types, Coco and Melba, and then with my two jock types, Rold and Lyman. There was no difference anymore. They are all the same. I had two peppy types in my Animal Crossing game, Peanut and Tangy, and yeah, you sometimes caught them saying the same thing. But the conversations in the first game were crafted so differently back then to make them so genuine that they often seemed like their own unique characters. Tangy and Hornsby rarely copied each other, but New Horizons, that's all I experience. Character types who all say the same stuff. So what's the point of trying to get Hornsby anymore? Bo is just gonna say the same thing. So is Filbert, so is Hopkins, so is Bob. And that's the problem here. Animal Crossing has become more of a crafting sim than a life sim. And by no means am I complaining about the crafting and customization. I absolutely love it. But you didn't need to get rid of the characters in the process. I don't want to spend all my time customizing my island and terraforming. I want to spend time talking with my villagers. But I don't feel like I have an option because of this. There is now no point for me to try to get Hornsby. I already have Bo to give me my lazy speech for the day. It's gone to the point where people on sites like Nookazon have started selling villagers. I'm not against that part, but you may have noticed something. All the most valuable characters to buy a Nookazon are either cute, cool, or have a unique look to them. I hope you guys see what this means. People no longer build their connections like they did in earlier games. Hornsby was one of my favorite characters just based off the interactions I had with him while playing the first game. But look at the value in Nookazon for him. 
people aren't paying a lot for him. This means that people only want cool looking villagers because they don't like to build a relationship with them. They like to build a relationship with their appearance. People now get rid of villagers left and right to get villagers like Raymond, Marshall, and Judy just because of their looks. Because why waste time building a bond with Ed the horse when you can have a cooler looking Raymond who says the exact same things? It's no longer about building bonds. It's about getting the coolest looking villager. Now obviously this is does not apply to every player. There is definitely a lot of players who have built genuine connections with non-popular villagers. But I feel this is more to do with the wonderful talents of the writers and the translators, as they have done a great job creating lovable characters with their dialogue. The problem is, is that these conversations are just too similar. As stated before, villagers of the same personality type are just going to say the same things as each other. Again, it makes conversations less genuine, hence making the connections with villagers seem lessened. Which sucks for me to say as I do truly love the villagers that I have on my island in New Horizons, but I keep hearing them say the same stuff over and over. They aren't characters at this point, they're broken records. And what might even be worse is the missing villager bond features. Look, New Leaf isn't exactly perfect here. Take example this clip I recorded of a villager having the exact same conversation with me two times in a row. But at least in New Leaf, there were features like villager visits or villagers inviting you to their place. What happened to this? This was so fun, and it was such a great bonding experience to have with your favorite villagers. And with this feature missing, it's just another reason why I'm feeling this way. And this may just be me, but every time a villager asks me to rate their appearance in New Horizons, I never get an option to actually rate them. Villagers asking you these questions and then you actually being able to respond like a New Leaf really made the game more immersive, and its villagers. Sure, the conversations your villagers have are fun for the time, but again, I found my villagers quickly running out of conversation as they start to repeat the old ones. At the end of the day, it's changes like these that make the villagers no longer feel like genuine characters. They are replaceable NPCs for your island. As Raymond and Ed will say the same thing, so will Judy and Pecan. And that is really heartbreaking, as this series was built off building these friendships with these villagers. Heck, honestly, those villagers helped me through some of my most lonely times when I was growing up and I made genuine connections with some of them. And it just sucks that New Horizons, for all of its amazing graphics, sounds, and features, its villagers seem to be the weakest of the series, in my opinion. Have your crafting and customization in Animal Crossing as it's essential at this point. But Nintendo, if you're somehow watching this, you guys are doing great. Your Switches are selling out. Animal Crossing New Horizons is a huge hit. I ask you, please spend some of those earnings into making Animal Crossing New Horizons the best Animal Crossing game there is. And please start by bringing back those amazing writers and translators. Have them brainstorm and create some new, funny, entertaining, and heartfelt conversations for the villagers. Please make the villagers' conversations genuine and unique for every villager in some way so we can build a genuine connection with them. And if you need advice, I got an idea for a quick and effective solution. I saw this comment talking about how there's a type A and type B of each villager personality. I tried to look into this and have found no proof of it, but I think a system like this would be a great idea for New Horizons. But don't stop at B, at least go to H or J. This will allow there to be a lot of new unique conversations you can have with villagers who have the same type of personality. That way you won't feel like all jock types are going to say the exact same thing, making conversations with them more genuine, which in turn makes the game more immersive. Personally, I would like it if you guys could just add unique conversations for every villager, and with your resources, I personally believe you could, but you guys have 391 villagers in New Horizons, so that letter system could be a quick and effective way to solve the problem right now. But guys, that was my long rant about my big problem with Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now please remember, I love this game a lot, but this one issue has been bothering me so much lately that I felt like I need to address it. I personally feel that if the conversations in Animal Crossing, a game from the early 2000s, were this genuine, then Animal Crossing in 2020 should at least have the same quality. Villagers can be immersive characters. They are in the first game. They can definitely be again.
Also, Nintendo, you had up to 15 villages in the first Animal Crossing game, and that map was smaller than New Horizons. What's stopping you guys from doing that here? Sorry, I just wanted to add that, but seriously, love the game. But everyone, please tell me what you guys think of this in the comments below. Please remember, I made this video to discuss my problems with New Horizons, but I am happy to see your guys' thoughts too. Do you agree or disagree? And if you liked the video, please leave a like, and if you're new, please subscribe for updates on new content. But everyone, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.